Training for cycling has evolved massively in just a short space of time. So when we were out at the Tour de France recently, we thought we would try and find out exactly how you train like a pro in 2017. And when we were on a visit to the Candel Drapak squad, we caught up with their head of performance, a man by the name of Keith Flory, to find out how he monitors his riders, how he makes sure they're gonna be at their best when they need to be, and how he does it all remotely. Now, the first question I asked was that given that I didn't actually have a coach personally with my last few years of riding when I was full time, I wondered, I wondered how things were at the Cannondale team. So all of the, the guys on, on the team have coaches and they'll be either be internal coaches or, or a group of external coaches and that external coach might be in the same coach that they've had for five, ten years or might be new. So every rider has a, has a coach, um, either internal or external. Okay, and so how... You know, as a performance director, do you have to keep a track of all that? How does that work? Yeah, so we, we um, have the Training Peaks suite of products that we, that we capitalise on and, and use with an, on a daily basis. Um, and uh, one of my roles is basically to, to, to track all of the, the training and the racing data and to plug that into our informed decisions. Um, on each and every rider basically. Okay, so so the training will get planned out by a rider's coach who might not have anything to do with the team, but you effectively keep control or can see everything that goes on? Yeah, so we have a working dialogue with all coaches. We meet, we talk, we communicate based on the athlete being in the centre of the relationship and then we're, you know, from the team side, we're looking at what the team's goals are and then we're communicating that with both the rider and the coach and trying to trying to develop that relationship as a, as a real partnership, really. So the riders can still have external coaches because it can all be internally monitored from within the team and monitored on a day-by-day -day basis. Because you see, when I was riding, if I had a bad day and I didn't do exactly what I'd planned to do, there was no way of checking up. Not so now. No. No, there is a traffic light system. We have the, the homepage set up um, for all of our teams, so all of our riders are on there. Um, and then each of them has prescribed training through, through each of the forthcoming week. And when they upload their data, that will um, basically come up with a, a color coding system about whether they've achieved what they, they, the prescribed training was set or if it wasn't. Um, and then, so it very quickly allows me to look at the screen and go, right, green dots across the row for, for one rider. Uh, and there might be a red dot on one of riders which might flag an issue which we then need to follow up and, and question basically. And so might... do you follow up every red dot? We try to. Crikey. How do you train like a pro? Don't slack for a start. Although, I did ask Keith and he said that if the weather is really, really bad, he would excuse if you'd knocked off a couple of hours. So that is something of a relief then. Now, when you're training with power, it gives you a whole load more insight than if you just had speed and hours in the saddle to look at. Uh, but that insight also means that you have a whole load of acronyms. So you have TSS for Training Stress Score, you have CTL for Chronic Training Load, then you have TSB for Training Stress Balance. And what I was really interested to know was how exactly Keith uses these to the benefit of his riders. The training Stress Score is based off threshold and it's based, so 100 points on the Training Stress Score is relates to um, an hour at threshold okay. or there or thereabouts. So, so that will give you an indication of how hard somebody's working. Um, so a four hour ride at medium intensity might give you a, a training stress score of 150, for example, 200 approximately. So then you can track that over the week and you can, you can actually see how much intensity they've done within that, within that framework. So for all of the, those metrics, you can look at them individually um, which, which gives you um, a really good insight. But then what really helps is being able to look at, you use the dashboard feature that Training Peaks has and, and building that, uh, looking at the um, performance management chart, okay. which allows us to look over a longitudinal view. Um, so you get a real context. So both from, from that performance management chart, we can look and see the ongoing trends, whether it's positive or negative, and if it's negative, we can look to address it. And if it's positive and everything looks on track, then all's good in the world. Now, I know what you're all thinking. How does this apply to me? How can I learn from the pros to make me better as a bike rider? I, th I think the golden rule is consistency in training. Okay. Um, and that doesn't have to be cons um, the same training, but it has to be 
planned, it has to be structured, and it has to, you have to consistently apply yourself. Okay. Um, work with a work with a trainer or a coach, um, and they will help you shape that. And then just commitment, commitment to the cause, basically, um, and just getting the work done. There's there's no magic bullets um, in training. You just got to get it done. Okay. Now I think this is probably an impossible question to answer, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. If there was one session that, in your experience, has been really effective for pro cyclists, what is it? And, and can we recommend it for, for GCM viewers to do? And me, basically, I want to have a go at it as well. Um, th th there's many sessions, um, and people respond differently to different sessions, but one that brings people up quite quickly, certainly towards going into a block of racing, is doing something called a, doing a 40-20 effort. Okay. And that's basically 40 seconds on, 20 off, um, and over around about 10 to 12 minutes then recovery and then repeat a number of times some of the some of the pros will do it three four times so that will be you know a large block of work yeah um and the 20 seconds on uh, sorry the 40 seconds on will be around about 120 over threshold 120 percent okay. um and then the, the 20 seconds off is is off basically okay. you'll you'll soon realize the effort my word i'd rather not have asked that question now in hindsight that sounds absolutely brutal even one set Sounds utterly, utterly terrifying. Although I don't know about you, but I have very much enjoyed that insight from Keith, so thank you to him. Perhaps next time though, we'll ask how you can do a recovery ride like a pro, and that may well be more up my street. Now then, do make sure you subscribe to GCN before leaving this video. It's very simple, just click on the globe. And then if you want some more content that's relevant to this, why not click down there? Because we explained five metrics that you use when training with power, so things like the aforementioned TSS, or click down there for some sprinting tips with none other than Marcel Kittle.